In calculus, you're going to see a lot of piecewise functions. For example, when talking about continuity, when talking about differentiability, we'll be using quite a bit of piecewise functions. And so, we have to know what they mean. We're going to take a look at a piecewise linear function because these are a little bit easier to draw than others. So, what does a piecewise function mean? Piecewise is kind of like Frankenstein. Frankenstein was built out of a bunch of different parts of humans. And this function right here, piecewise function, is built out of a bunch of different parts of functions. That's one way to think about it. And we sew all of these functions together to create a monster. So to the left of negative 3, we're using negative x minus 3. And then at negative 3, we're sewing on this function right here, x plus 3. And now we're going to use this function up until x equals 0 right here when we sew on negative 2x plus 3. We're going to use this function from 0 up until 3, which is right here. And at that point, we're going to sew on x minus 6. And then we'll use x minus 6 to the right of 3. So we have three points where we're going to sew two functions together. I call these Frankenstein points. At negative 3, at 0, and at positive 3. So, let's start farthest to the left and we'll just, you know, sew these functions together and figure out how to do this. We're going to start at negative 3. That's right here. Now, everywhere from negative 3, because it's equal to, and to the left of negative 3, on over here, we're using the function negative x minus 3. Well, let's see here. We can plug in negative 3, which is our Frankenstein point, into this function. Negative negative 3 is positive 3. Minus 3 is 0. So at negative 3, this function is 0. Now if you think about this line, this is the line with slope negative 1 and y-intercept negative 3. Negative 3 is right here. So really, we're looking at this line right here. Let's actually let's just draw this line we're looking at this line right here. However, however, this line is only going to exist to the left of negative 3. So even though this line, in actuality, has domain all reals and spans the entire x-axis, here we're only defining it to the left of negative 3, which means that everywhere else other than to the left of negative 3 we're going to erase it. And so here is the first part of this equation, is that to the left, from negative 3 and to the left, we're using this line right here. Now, at negative 3, but not including negative 3, we're going to sew on the function x plus 3. Now, x plus 3, at negative 3, if you plug in negative 3, you get 0. So we're actually starting in the same place. That's actually okay. That's fine. Now let's look to the right and see where it ends. And it ends at x equals 0. At x equals 0, if you plug 0 in, 0 plus 3 is 3. Now, we're going to use an open circle here because our function actually doesn't equal 0 or x never equals 0 here, our function doesn't equal positive 3 yet. Now, we can make a line between these two points right here, and so this right here would be the equation of the line x plus 3. In fact, it would go even further. This is the line x plus 3. However, we're only going to use this line from negative 3 to 0, so we're just going to cut off every part that is out here. And it still has an open circle at x equals 0 because it's not equal to. Now let's take a look at our next Frankenstein function which is negative 2x plus 3. At x equals 0, including x equals 0, we're going to use this function. So if you plug in 0, negative 2 times 0 plus 3 is 3. Hey, we can actually fill in this point because at 0 we are in fact at 3. That's pretty cool. And now let's look to the right hand side 
of this region. We're looking to x equals 3, but not actually equals up till 3, not including 3. If you were to plug 3 into here, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, plus 3 is negative 3. So that means that we are going down to, from x equals 3, down to negative 3. And it's an open circle because x is less than that. Now, negative 2x plus 3. That is the line that passes through these two points and goes off to infinity. However, once again, we are only using this line from x equals 0, so that's right here, up until x equals 3, but not equals, up until x is less than 3. And so here we have the next part of this Frankenstein function. Now for the final part, let's look to the right of 3. We're going to start at x equals 3. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. Well, look, we can just fill in this point now. 3 comma negative 3. Oh, yay. We filled it in. And now we have a slope of positive 1. So that means that we're going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So this thing is going to look like that by the end. And here is the Frankenstein function that is defined by f. To the left of negative 3, we're using the line negative x minus 3. That's this line right here, but we're only using it to the left of negative 3. From negative 3 to 0, we're using x plus 3. That has a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 1. From 0 to 3, we're using negative 2x plus 3. That has a slope of negative 2, a y-intercept of 3, but it only exists in this region right here. And finally, to the right of 3, we're using x minus 6. That has a y-intercept of negative 6. It's way down here. And it has a slope of 1. And so this is our Frankenstein function. All points are accounted for. Uh, this is continuous everywhere. And you'll learn what that means in chapter 2. And everything looks good.